We're back in the orchard today and we are going to be working on planting our fruit trees. So we're gonna jump right into that and talk about how we're planting them, um, a few tips and tricks, things that we've learned throughout the years. But first I just wanted to mention why we are planting fruit trees. I guess it's probably obvious because we want fruit and that's definitely true. Here in Alaska, not a lot of fruit really grows that well. And Eric and I aren't overly fond of grocery store fruit. It just doesn't have the same flavor as something that was grown fresh and picked at the time that it was supposed to be. So we knew that we wanted to put in fruit trees here. There's about three fruit trees that do well in our zone of Alaska, which is zone three, and that's apples, plums, and cherries. So today we are gonna be planting apples and plums. Let's walk around and show you the trees we got. We were fortunate to pick them up from a local orchard from an awesome couple who have um, been growing trees and grafting them for a very long time here in Alaska. So we feel very comforted that we got these trees from them. So the first variety that we have is Brook Gold and that's a yellow plum. This is our second plum and it is Toka. And Toka is going to be the pollinator for Brook Gold. And Toka is also just like a really good pollinator tree. And of course it produces plums too, but I'm really excited about this one for the bees because it's supposed to have lots of blooms in the spring. Now these trees are a little bit smaller. These were grafted from the gentleman we bought them from. And this is Fort Mac Mac, and this is a zone one tree. Super excited for this. This um, is grown in Fairbanks, so it's a very hardy tree. All of the trees we're planting are zone one to three. This is Red Star, again, another uh, grafted tree by the folks we bought them from. and really really no looking nice um this is i think it's like a smaller red apple in general all the apples eric and i are going to be growing are smaller you know they're not you know ginormous apples or anything like that and that's pretty much just the varieties that you can grow here in alaska okay so this one is actually red star that is carol back there this is the one that has the red apple and we have two other apple varieties at the other end so we've got higher 12 right here, and then we have Norlin back there. The bigger trees were shipped here, so that's why they're quite a bit bigger, and they're in pots instead of like little grow bags. And those guys were a little pricier. Eric and I really like these ones, even though they're small, they're gonna take longer to grow. They're more affordable, and I just think it's awesome that someone local grafted them and that these trees have survived, you know, one to two winters already here in Alaska. All right, we already have all of the soil and amendments we're gonna be using over here. We have our topsoil we're gonna be using. We have some compost, which is broken down manure, and then we have some semi-fresh manure, and we're gonna be using just a little bit of the semi-fresh manure. starting with the Fort Mac Mac apple and our holes are 36 inches across and they're about 18 inches deep. Since our hole is a little bit too deep we're gonna start adding soil back and we're primarily putting back the native soil here but because it's pretty sandy and just like clumpy it doesn't really have a, um, a lot of organic matter we're going to be adding a small amount and mixing it well in of the all that aged manure and topsoil we have. Eric and I are filling this hole back in. We are again trying to primarily use the native soil. Um, if, if, if this was like decent soil, I probably wouldn't even add any of the amendments, but it's mainly because we have such rocky, not good soil. <laughs> so Eric also did a stake to help this tree since it's young. We're mainly staking them because we get a lot of wind here and these trees have constantly been falling over and they've already been bending a lot because of the wind. Now that we've had a chance to let that water kind of soak in and pack that dirt down, we are going to add a little bit more of this compost mixture right on the top. All right, one down, six more to go.
All right, guys, this is our last tree we're planting. And I just wanted to show you guys a close up of what the graph looks like. So all these holes that we're planting, we actually raise the root ball to where the soil line will meet up beneath that graph line, which is this big bulb, or better yet, just where it's already been planted. So that's a really good mark to go off of when you pick up these trees, is just don't plant or put soil above that line. Another thing you may notice is that we are planting these trees in a hole that is about three times the size of their root ball. So make sure you give them lots of space. Um, they need that loose soil to push their roots out. All right, the mini orchard is starting to look pretty good. We've got all the trees in. We still have a bunch more things we want to do, so let's not waste any time. Let's keep building. Just barely? Yeah. Wow. I don't, I don't even think I could, babe. I really can't. I really can't. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna die. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> mini arbor done and we got our nice big gate in I think it's about five feet by like four and a half feet so big garden gate and I'm just filing down or sanding down this little corner that was barely hidden and we're gonna finish up on the latch Please. It's really secure too for other animals. I mean, that's, I like it. 
Is this one by fours? Mm -hmm. or one by threes? I think it was from our uh, sighting we did. on top of it pretty I think so yeah Okay guys, we are almost done with this project. It's taken us quite a few days to get this far, um, but we're, we're pretty close to wrapping up. I did just want to take a moment to talk about something. Back in January, Eric and I lost our eldest cat. His name was Hunter. He was going to be 11 this spring. And I know we had mentioned it on an episode when we were working on the inside of our house. Um, and then we kind of never mentioned it again. And so, um, you know, I wanted to just say I'm sorry that we didn't mention it. I know a lot of you guys reached out to us about it and just some concerns, but it was just a very abrupt thing for Eric and I, and we hadn't really had time to work through it. So now we're in June and this is the time for us. And I wanted to mention it to you guys because I know you guys follow us and you pay attention to lots of details and our critters and you care about them, which we think is wonderful. So we knew at some point we were gonna have to talk about it. Um, and that's what Eric and I did. So we actually have Hunter in this orchard and we have his name on this rock. This is a huge boulder here that we couldn't move when we were preparing this site. We kind of already like thought this out and we made him a birdhouse. Hunter loved watching birds. And as you can guess, his name, you know, held true. He definitely liked to go out and watch animals. And we made this birdhouse specifically very tall because we do still have our other cat, Pepper, who's a lot younger and she's a very skilled hunter. So it is just purely to watch birds. Um, it's not in any way for her cat to ever get to them. We felt the birdhouse was really appropriate given the situation because Hunter loved being outside. He was like a summer cat. And I think that's what was unfortunate about him passing away in January because he loves summer. Um, January in Alaska is hard, it's dark, it's cold. It's probably the, the toughest month, I'd say. And when we found, you know, when we noticed there were some symptoms he was showing, we took him in. And it was about a week later that we had to make a tough decision. So there wasn't a lot of time to really think about it or, or plan things, I guess, could I say. Um, so I, we're really just happy that we got to put him out here, you know, in his favorite place outside. He loved going out into our garden with us in the summer. And I'm so happy that we have a birdhouse just to kind of remind us of him. He was an awesome cat, definitely troubling um, a lot of the time when he was younger. And we've had him since he was a kitten, but we do have Pepper still, so, and of course, Bo and Bandit, Bo and Bandit are the two dogs. I also just wanted to say thank you guys again for watching and you know, commenting, emailing us, all of that, reaching out to us. Um, it really means a lot and I know you don't have to, so I, I appreciate it. And we really feel fortunate that you guys feel like you wanna tune in and check you know, what's going out on in our lives. Um, I think that means a lot to Eric and I. So with that being said, it's a sensitive topic, so that's probably all I'm going to mention at this point, just to bring you guys up to date and you know what's going on. We're definitely never going to forget him. We miss him a lot, and I wish he was here. But we have to finish up this orchard, and Eric has some fencing work to doing, so I'm going to turn the camera over, and we're going to see what he's working on.
All right, we're getting really close to being done with this whole orchard build. We're hoping to get this thing finished tonight. We need to get this whole enclosure hooked up on our electrical fence system. And to do that, we need to dig a small little trench, um, probably about 60 feet over to our garden where the little electric fence charger is. And we need to bury our wire and we need to hook it up over here. So I'm gonna use a pickaxe and I'm gonna start digging our trench. All right, this piece of wire, the first piece that I just got in was, we just bought it, it was a brand new piece, it was 50 feet. And then this piece right here that I'm gonna splice it into is left over from when we had electric fencing around the chicken coop. And we no longer have that in there anymore, so I dug it up and I'm just gonna use this little, I don't know what this thing's called, but it's meant for splicing uh, the wires together. I'm gonna use this to splice these together, put some electrical tape around it, and then I think we've got about I don't know, maybe 15 more feet, and then we're gonna run it up and see if we can get it hooked up to our electric fence charger. All right guys, we made it over to the fence charger and the way this is gonna work as soon as we're ready to actually put power to this thing is I'm just gonna slide through here and we're just gonna hook it onto the same positive that our electric fence is hooked up to. So the next step is heading back over to the orchard and we are gonna put um, some of these insulators, I believe they're called, that hold the actual electric fencing wire. We need to put two of those on each post and that's gonna hold the wire around the orchard. All right guys, Eric finished putting the insulators on for our electric fencing. We are waiting for our poly wire in the mail, so that will have to wait just a little bit. And the main reason for having that is moose. Um, moose are known to like fruit trees, so we really need to make sure that they can't get in here. It's the same thing that we use for our vegetable garden and it's worked so far. Let's head inside and I'm gonna show you guys what everything looks like.
So we tried to space our trees as far apart as we could. They're semi-dwarf, so they're not gonna get that big. And I think the closest any of them are is about seven feet or six feet. Um, but we do have larger perimeters for some of them, like this one, including you know the fence line too. So we can manage them by pruning them, but for the most part, they really shouldn't get that big. I wanted to show you how we staked them. So Eric just made these little stakes and we have a really loose um, little rope on here so the tree can still move around. Um, we want that. We don't want to, you know, have it fixated. But again, we get wind here and we were noticing that some of the smaller trees were blowing over a lot and I was a little bit concerned about that. In the future, what we may do is put something down on the ground. I have some clover. We may seed that next year. And, you know, we're really excited about this back bed. Uh, so far, we've already got some of our perennials in there and herbs, which is gonna work out great because I don't have to have them in that main garden. And another reason we have that bed back there is to plant flowers for the bees. So we'll get started on that next year. That's it for today. Thank you guys for watching and we will catch you next time.